Your challenge is to make more of this part. I mean, really, that's my challenge. My challenge, and you get to watch it from the comfort of your couch, and I just need to make it with a longer on-center spacing between these holes. And the real challenge is to see if I can make and get these running on the lathe this afternoon while shooting video, get the video edited and uploaded, and can that video be compelling? You tell me, strap in, let's get to work. I would really like to use this radial style live tool in order to uh, mill the flats on the part. And the problem is that on the subspindle side of the machine, the bulk of the subspindle itself is enormous and the turret is fairly bulky too. And so you end up needing really long tools just to be able to reach the part and I still can't even get there. So you can see there's a uh, very tight space and we're not even close enough yet. So if I was holding the part here instead of a blank of round stock, I just wouldn't be able to reach it. Not to mention that we already have a fairly long extension off of the turret. And so I'm gonna have to keep making it the way that I used to make it. So this right here is an axial style live tool. It's a double ender and um, this guy here will allow me to do the milling I need to do today in conjunction with some of these radial live tools. Now those are called radial because the tools exit the turret radially and uh, these ones here are on the same axis as your uh, main spindle. So that's how I think of it anyway. This machine has a motorized tool touch setter arm, which is super cool. You can swing down. You can even program it with an M code to do that during a program. But I mainly use it just for setup like this. When you touch the tool against it, it can record a sort of transfer measurement, do some subtraction. It can figure out how long your tool must be. And now your tool is calibrated for length. Here it is again. It's a little bit tedious setting up the lathe turret, but it's not too complicated. And then typically the preferred lathe workflow is to make a bunch of the same thing, kind of amortize the cost of the setup over all the parts you make. So you can roll the bar feeder out of position. Check out these tools I made. This is like canning jar tongs. I welded some little lips on there so that I could yank that thing out. It's actually very difficult to extract a spindle liner without a special tool like that. I think we're about ready to just, you know, hit the button and start ripping. I'm sure there will be little offsets and tweaks and probably some troubleshooting still to come, but I kind of just need to cross my fingers and start, start running it. We're going to watch the bar feeder do a bar exchange. So this is a sub program that the lathe is running and then it's triggering some operations from the bar feeder. What it'll do is I start with a little slug of material. We're going to push that out and load a three foot stick with the bar feeder. And uh, this happens every so often in the automation cycle. I like to start the job with this bar exchange because I'll be right there to watch it and to make sure it's configured correctly, that everything is working smoothly as I plan so that the next time when I'm away, I don't, it doesn't do anything unexpected. And then this is part of my sub program. I use a turret stop, which is actually part of the parting blade. And I push it out too far. And then I use the turret stop to push it back into the correct length. Facing operation with a rougher, finish facing, finish turning. Definitely was getting a better surface finish with coolant turned on, but I needed the coolant turned off for video. This live tool holder is really nice, but it kind of needs a bearing rebuild, so it's not leaving quite as good of a surface finish as I would like. It's all I got right now. I'm gonna get it rebuilt soon.
So this lathe has a y-axis and you can barely see it, but I'm actually using the y-axis uh, to do some of the, the chamfering on this operation. If you didn't have a y-axis, you could still make this part just about as well. But uh, if you got it, take advantage of it. I think uh, if you plunge a chamfer mill or a countersink to deburr a hole, it doesn't always do quite as good of a job as actually interpolating a circle with a uh, chamfer mill. Uh, that, that's my mileage anyway. It's also less prone to chatter. We pulled the bar, we're parting it off. It's the magic of the subspindle lathe is that it'll run one part or a thousand parts or ten thousand parts and uh, you know it's kind of the same process if, if you can bar feed it like this and use the subspindle. Kind of a retraction beyond what I need between those two passes, but not really a big deal. There's a clearance plane in the cam operation that I could dial in a little tighter. Now this live tool holder is a double axial style, so it has one end pointed toward the main spindle and one end pointed toward the sub spindle, which is pretty slick because I can use the same tool station for both the main and sub spindle work. And this part has flats, and between the main and subspindle transfer, you can you can do a transfer with phase, and so it actually can clock the features that we cut on the main spindle to the features that we're cutting on the subspindle side. And that's it, part's done. You can run that in a loop as many times as you want. So I set the part counter on the machine control to 100. I'll probably end up making more than 100. The parts spit out of the conveyor belt and they, they land in this bucket. So this is the old version. It's got three ribs in the center and importantly, the center to center spacing of the holes is 38 millimeters. This goes in the stay slayer tool that I make. And, and this one here is the new one. It's got four ribs in the center. It's 45 millimeter on center spacing. And this is for a, a new addition to that tool which allows people to hold taller chain stays for bottom bracket mitering. I gotta say I think this was pretty successful. I got the parts running on this machine. I already made 35 or 40 of them and uh, I was able to edit most of the video in that time. I gotta finish editing the video and get it uploaded. If you watched this far, thanks for hanging out today.